Now there are a number of supplements out there and different brands promising to help you build more muscle, but creatine, however, has been proven time and time again by multiple studies to be one of the most effective and safer supplements to use in order for you to be able to build more muscle mass. Science has clearly shown that there is a certain way to use creatine in order to help you build more muscle mass and strength. And in today's video, I'll cover each and every step on how to use creatine to achieve these results, as well as the potential side effects. Now, before we jump into step one, there are a few things we need to understand scientifically on how creatine actually helps us build more muscle mass and strength. Now, to put it in layman terms, your body has what we call ATP. Now, these are energy stores that the muscles use when lifting weight and as you continue to lift they keep getting depleted now when creatine comes into the picture it regenerates these atp stores which actually gives us a boost of a rep during a tough set of maybe bench presses and creatine is also found naturally in our bodies as a source of energy and also in foods but it's usually not enough considering the fact that when you cook meat you already lose about a quarter of creatine within the meat itself. And this is where creatine supplementation comes into play. Now, step number one, picking the right type of creatine. Now, there are multiple types of creatine supplements with different fancy brands. Some even promising a higher absorption rate of creatine within your body. But let's actually look at what science has to say about that. Now, this is a 2021 systematic review showing a list of all the different types of creatine that were promised to have a high absorption rate and less side effects. And this study studied each and every single type of creatine within the list and found that creatine monohydrate was the cheapest type of creatine and yet still was as effective as the other types of creatine. Now, some of these alternatives in the market will just promise that their creatine has a greater absorbability, thus more effective, hence the need to make it more expensive. But just sticking to simple creatine monohydrate will just save you a lot of money. Another bonus tip is that when you're picking creatine from the counter, look at the label. If creatine monohydrate is the only ingredient that's mentioned there, then you're good to go. Now, step two, how much? Okay, we covered the type of creatine that you should pick. Now let's cover the amount of creatine that you should take on a daily basis in order for you to maximize the effects of creatine for muscle growth. Is there a dosage that's too little or too much? Now here are a couple of studies. Now one study showed that taking creatine for a full year with a dosage of about one gram on a daily basis had no effect when it came to lean muscle mass and performance or muscle function. Now, this other study where female swimmers were given a dosage of two grams of creatine, the study also found that there was no improvements whatsoever. So a dosage of one to two grams is just too little. Well, what about the recommended scoop size of five grams of creatine on a daily basis? Well, this 2018 study clearly shows how supplementing with three grams of creatine creatine on a daily basis had better effects than supplementing with five grams of creatine on a daily basis. And this was also supported by other studies, by the way, clearly showing that supplementing with creatine with a dosage that's between two to three grams of creatine per day showed improvements in strength. So just simply sticking to three grams of creatine per day will do just fine. Now, when starting your supplementation with creatine, you wanted to first fully saturate your muscle fibers. Now, at this point, that's when you'll be able to notice the effects of actually supplementing with creatine. And for this reason, there are two types of loading protocols. You have the non-loading protocol and the loading protocol. The loading protocol is a faster way of getting creatine fully saturated within your muscle fibers. And the non-loading protocol is a much slower process or much slower way of fully saturating creatine within your muscle fibers. But both eventually do lead to a full saturation of creatine within your muscle fibers. I think this just simply depends on how fast you want creatine to be fully saturated. Now the loading protocol is where you take five grams of creatine four times a day 
which adds to 20 grams of creatine at the end of the day for the next seven days. Thereafter, a simple dosage of three grams per day will be sufficient in helping you maintain the saturation. Now, taking any more than this will just end up flushing the extra dosage of creatine down the toilet. Now, the non-loading protocol is where you take three grams of creatine per day from the day you start supplementing with creatine and then you continue on with that dosage until full saturation and this is the reason why this process is much slower than the loading protocol since using this method will reach full saturation after 28 days but like i said earlier both protocols eventually do lead full saturation at the end of the day and at this point your muscle fibers will retain water giving you that full look and this will also reflect on the scale as water weight so do keep that in mind when you're on a diet now when i started taking creatine i always thought that taking it before my workouts would be better in as far as performance is concerned as opposed to taking it after my workouts and maybe it felt like it did but i might have been wrong considering the fact that once creatine is fully saturated within your muscles you'll still get that boost either way which makes no sense for some supplement companies to include creatine within their pre-workouts but there's a study however that clearly shows that taking creatine after your workouts had an added 1.7 percent growth within your lean muscle mass as opposed to taking it before your workouts but obviously this is not a significant difference well at least according to science now in as far as what to take it with well there's not much specifics on that considering the fact that creatine will just fully saturate your muscles either way however if you want it to absorb faster there has been a couple of studies that show that taking creatine with carbs and protein as opposed to taking it with just plain water, had a greater absorption rate, which constantly promoted creatine retention. It has been commonly found that taking it with grape juice might promote a greater absorption rate. And this is simply because the sugar within the grape juice spikes insulin. And obviously insulin acts as a bridge between the nutrients that you consume and the cells within your body. Now this one study clearly showing that taking creatine with carbs and protein can actually decrease the time it takes for creatine to fully saturate your muscle fibers from seven days to about two to three days. Now you can do this by taking creatine with a protein shake and adding something like a banana. But keep in mind that this only alters the creatine saturation period and not the effects of the creatine itself, meaning it doesn't make it any more effective or more powerful and again i still do have to stress the fact that whether you take creatine with carbs and protein or with just plain water you will eventually reach full creatine saturation within your muscle fibers now should you cycle creatine well this one study shows that it's not that necessary because once creatine is fully saturated within your muscle fibers and you're still maintaining the daily dosage then you won't notice any decrease within the creatine stores within your muscle fibers in any way shape or form now are there any side effects when it comes to taking creatine well researchers have noted that with some individuals there has been some discomfort in as far as the stomach cramps when loading creatine without water and too much creatine at once can lead to diarrhea hence the need to space out your dosage evenly throughout the day during a loading protocol well what about hair loss there's no evident direct correlation between creatine and hair loss in fact this stems from the idea that supplementing with creatine actually increases the hormone dht which is known to associate with your hair follicles and that's a study that was conducted in male rugby players again this is not enough and no further correlation has been studied so there's no need for you to be concerned about this now here's the full summary of today's video creatine monohydrate is the best pick you can pick between a loading protocol and a non-loading protocol to reach full saturation of creatine within your muscle fibers use three grams of creatine after the full saturation to maintain the saturation itself you can take it with carbs and protein if you want the saturation of creatine to be quicker and also remember to take it with a lot of water and space the dosage during the loading phase to avoid stomach cramps and again there's no direct correlation or evidence 
showing hair loss due to creatine as a side effect. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below if you have any further questions. I'll see you on the next video.